and welcome to the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. I am your host, Grace the Babbler. That's my handle on Instagram um, and that's probably the best place that you can find me apart from here on YouTube as well. So welcome to my little podcast. This is going to be quite a quick podcast today because James is cooking dinner downstairs. So I wanted to um, try and get get one out and get a little podcast out. There's not too much to update you on, um, but I will start with um, how far I've come on the jumpers. So today is the 5th of October, the last time we saw each other, we I, I was in the camper van. So we're back from holidays since the 1st and I had uh, the weekend off, which was lovely. We just tidied up the house, did a bit of sorting. I emptied, a lo I emptied, do you, do you ever do that thing where you just empty out all the cupboards and throw away all the expired stuff and the old cups that you don't want? We got some beautiful new cups from Kylemore Abbey and we got a lovely present of a set of four cups with cows on them from a friend, uh, from one of my cousins down in Waterford and then er, in Wexford. And then we got a lovely set of Tipperary, oh no, I think it was Newgrange Crystal, um, Newbridge, Newbridge uh, glasses which are like uh, we got some really nice kind of whiskey glasses and I also had bought some like cheap glasses, uh, wine glasses because we always break them. So I actually sadly emptied out my dyeing press uh, from the kitchen and so the next time I die is probably going to be in a new house if I can, if we can ever find a new house to buy because there just are none out there and therefore the price of everything has gone up by about 60 to 80 thousand euros so I'm not paying that much extra. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard everywhere I know but sure look we wanted to wait anyway until we had the wedding over and done with so now um, in the next six months now we're going to watch our finances and hopefully um, find somewhere that we love and that we're gonna have a nice time in fingers crossed um but yeah at the moment in Ireland and everywhere all over the world I know construction and, and renovation costs are actually through the roof as well so we're, we're fine where we are we're saving money we're still renting but we are saving um because we've got a very good um, deal so we're happy to sit on this and um let that kind of work away and eventually we'll figure it out. <clears throat> so the last two days I've been um, in, uh, it's five, five o'clock. Like I've just finished a day of lectures. Um, I'm doing a degree in, I'm doing a postgraduate degree in mammography. Check your boobs, people. Um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Do the, do the boob checks. Look it up how to do it. Um, if you need to book a mammogram and you've not been doing a mammogram because you don't like them, I'm sorry, babes, but it's the best thing. It's the best thing to see what's going on. So, chat to me if you want, if you're nervous or anything like that, and I can talk you through some bits if you want. Um, cause I know some people are nervous about the radiation and all that jazz, but I've got you covered on that. If you, if anyone is anyway nervous about anything, um, about going for your mammogram, reach out and and chat to us. You know, uh, uh this anyone in your program. And um, we can put your mind at ease. Um, yeah, I know it. I would do it if I was in the age range for it, you know? So not just because they're paying my bills. <laughs> they aren't yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'm paying to do the, the degree, so. <laughs> um, right, so what has been keeping me sane? Um, medication. <laughs> and glorious glorious stockingette glory glory stockingette so i have been knitting on uh, the pavement sweater by vera valimaki and is this oh that's bits ends weaving in ends oh that is the right color this is the perfect room to do a podcast in i know the background is a bit boring but the light is perfect so i am actually knitting three skeins at the same time 
us tangling a little bit, but I just have to unwind it. Um, so three skeins together, alternating skeins all the way down this um, sweater. So the pavement sweater is a very simple um, sweater. I don't know, I think, I don't, are these called contiguous sleeves or is it a raglan? It's a form of a raglan, but it's not a, your classic raglan. Um, you increase very fast up top and only on one side. So if you see, the sleeve, the, the top, the upper sleeve number of stitches never changes. It's just your front and your back stitches. It's very simple, really addictive. I love this pattern so much. So you've got this kind of cute little um, high raglan. You do, it does mean that you cast on quite a lot of underarm stitches to make it like fill in the rest of the hole because obviously you've only just got the top the top covered. I haven't tried this on yet, so I don't know if it's going to fit. Ah, look, it'll fit me. Look, it'll stretch. Anyway, it's going to be fine. Um, so I picked the, I picked a large size. I picked like the XL maybe. Yeah, I think I picked one extra size to like the size recommended for me. Um, just because I wanted this to be oversized and really like cozy and comfy. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted it to kind of have a nice kind of flutter situation. Drape? Drape. Flutter situation. Write that down. That's the name of this podcast. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so I'm really, really loving, 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 loving this yarn. I'm actually seeing now as I'm going, as I'm looking, I'm alternating skeins and I'm getting this kind of weird pooling. But it's actually kind of zebra stripes. It's actually kind of nice. Huh, it's so interesting. But the thing is, and the, the great thing about this, the alternating skeins, is that this is going to pool all the way down. It's probably going to, because I'm not changing size, I'm not increasing or decreasing. It's a really simple straight pattern. That's why I wanted it kind of large, because I wanted it to fit over the boobs and the hips. Um, so it's just a straight up and down. There's no waist shaping at all. Um, so that pooling is going to continue on all the way down. So it's going to look intentional, which it totally is, totally intentional. That's what I wanted from the start. <laughs> oh no, see. Try not to panic. I'll pick it up later. I need to put it on larger and a larger needle, uh, a larger cable anyway. I need to disconnect this and attach it to a larger cable to put it on over my head um, to see if it actually. <laughs> it's far too late though. I'm not going back. If it's not as large and flowy as I want, then it's just a nice uh, normal size. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. The only bit I'm worried about really is the neck. It looks a bit small, but that was the same with my other pavement and it fits me absolutely fine. Um, so I really like this neck, actually. I love, it's just a really simple garter stitch neck. And this is the back seam there, which is really tidy. Um, it is a uh, short row situation. So there's, this is a little bit of a short row. That's the back of it that comes up a little bit higher on the back and then the front is a little bit lower there. It's so cute. I love this. I really like it and I love the colours. So the colour is uh, Sweet Georgia in Tough Love Sock. Sorry, the colour is Evening and the base is Tough Love Sock, which is... uh 80% superwash merino 20 20% nylon so 80 20 um and it's 205 yards per 115 grams so these are actually bigger that it's it's not 100 grams they're 115 grams nice nicey nice nice so um i got three of them and i'm hoping that it'll i think it will i think it'll be plenty like this is the amount i've got left in three of them so I haven't weighed it or anything like that, anything organised like that. This is not the organised podcast. This is not what you're here for. In case you, in case this is your first time, if you're interested in organised, well thought out, planned podcasting, this 
is not it. This is a babbling, random thoughts podcast. Welcome. Sometimes they're nice too, you know, sometimes they're nice as well. So I'm really loving this just for the round and round and round. It's really nice. <clears throat> it was lovely when in, when I was lecturing, when in lectures as well, because I can just knit away and still concentrate on stuff. And it was also really nice when I was visiting people as well, because I could just knit away and it was really nice. So doo -doo 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 -doo. that is project number one. Project number two um, probably doesn't look too different to the last time you saw it. I have added on like a couple more stripes. Um, so this is my boxy, my autumn boxy. Um, there was a really funny TikTok the other day. It was like, someone said, are you ready for fall? And the person was like, I thought you meant fall of civilization. She's like, no, just autumn. <laughs> I was like, I'm kind of ready for both. <laughs> so this is my fall of civilization uh, boxy sweater. So um, I'm kind of... Someone please tell me that this small, I did I make a mistake? I didn't do these in smaller needles. So is this going to flip for the rest of its life? That would suck. And I, I do tend, the more, knit, the more I knit, the more I realise that the jumper will return to the state that you knit it in, despite blocking. It will. Um, so... Is this going to curl forever and ever and ever? This is eight stitches. It's the same amount of stitches as in the rest. There is a wider stripe there. That orange, big orange stripe, that's 10 stripes. Because I'm an idiot. This is, a, this is a nine stripes. Again, idiot. Um, yeah. So, and also, it's just a, once you realize that you've done a whole extra row, you've got like 300 stitches to take back. And I'm just not doing it. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Stripes be damned. Um, but yeah, it is looking gorgeous, isn't it? So these are Pixie yarns um, in, in her gorgeous solids. And I, oh, I'll see if I can remember what colours they are. So this green is Picholine or Picoline. I don't know how she's saying it. I'm saying it French, I think. Oh, geez, what if I'm wrong? Oh, Pixie yarns. Sorry about that, love. Uh, this brown is a lovely satchel. So it's kind of like got those, you know, back to school vibes. <laughs> Um, this one is Marigold, M-E-R, so M-E-R-I-G-O-D, gold, Marigold, not Marigold. And then the orange is Foxy, Foxy, because I'm a Foxy lady. Also, I want my hair to be that colour, please. It's that colour currently, which is also a nice colour, but yeah. So I'm starting to see a lot of grey hairs come through and I'm like, is this the time where I finally dye my hair? Also, I don't, I want to give it a trim because there's a lot of it. And I was saying before the wedding, I was just going to chop it off and donate it. But also, oh, how would I look with a bob? Also, oh, bobs are so much effort, like you can't really tie them back. I mean, I think I'd look kind of cute though really tight bob <laughs> but I never blow dry my hair is short hair a lot of work maintenance tell me please yeah anyway anyway so yeah I'm half thinking about dyeing my hair kind of this coppery color I mean it wouldn't come out like that but like I was thinking about one of those leaving like you know conditioner colors where you get like 12 weeks out of it I would be fascinated Because I really think that this is the last of my true hair colour. Because it's, you can't see it right now, obviously, because my hair is greasy as well because it's darker up top. But there there are a lot of greys coming in and my hair is a lot duller. The colour isn't as intense anymore. Anyway, that's fine. So, um... I can't remember... Do you know what? Someone in the last podcast was saying that they couldn't find Deborah Makes. I think I think her name is actually Deborah Makes Crafts. Deborah Makes Crafts. Um, sorry, I couldn't see the little. It's a little bit tricky to see Deborah Makes Crafts. I'll see if I can find the link properly for that. Sorry if I didn't uh, link it properly the last time. 
and I wonder if she's still doing them. A lot of, do you know, it's so funny, people with small businesses and crafty businesses, especially, I know this myself, like I really got into it for a while and I really do want to get back into it, but I just know now, I think we all know that doing too much is obviously a bad thing because you just burn yourself out. I'm just, you know, coming out of burnout situation and it's just not great and not practical, not practical at all. So um, I totally get people who who stop dying or who stop making things because you know that's it's just a lot it's just quite intense um you know they've got other things on their minds and other other demands of their time as well so one last actually I've got before I show you the next project I am going to put in a little ad break here I forgot to do it last time um I really appreciate um if you would watch the ad, I'd really appreciate that because um, the money then goes to me. <laughs> so, thank you so much. <laughs> I have to check my ad settings actually if I've taken off like all the political things and the diet thing. You can like, you can select what things you don't want advertised. I mean, it reduces down your, your money that you get, but you know, it's a bit better. Oh, it was really tough during like the whole um last american election and i didn't i didn't realize you could do that and then someone was like oh my god and i was like oh no but anyway i figured out how to do that quite quickly then after that <laughs> so um thank you for thank you for watching that so next is my jump for james you've seen the finished object slightly finished object i have a partially finished object next which is one uh, i finished one of the panels and interestingly um i was talking to nessa of the kilt craft podcast and she recommended that instead of just going up a straight panel with a with a blunt end um that i actually have a bit of a gusset and i think i think i did what she said i think i was doing it as as she said so basically i'll show you now under the sleeves i don't know if we talked about this last time but under the sleeves I didn't have much, like I didn't cast on a bunch of new stitches. It, you know, it, it, it would end up bulking up the underside here. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I've just, it just comes down to one stitch. So what it, what'll happen is it'll, cause the shoulders are absolutely fine. It just comes down and the belly's a bit tight and just across the chest is a bit tight. And um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you can see this now, I always leave a long tail when I know I'm gonna weave in something, but I know I'm just gonna use new yarn anyway. Why do I do this to myself? Okay, so this is the side. So can you see, the light is probably too good here to see it, but there is a, ah, uh, yeah, you see that? There's a curve, there's a little a little divot there of um, two pearl stitches, right? Which I put in to mark the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steek that up there and then sew it back but I think this yarn is quite it's woolly enough to hold itself but I'm not taking any you know just in case there's extra strain on it at any point um and then just the one stitch there underneath so, you just, so he doesn't have too much bulk underneath the arm because the arm fits perfectly I'm real good at arms now um and then I'm going to slowly kind of mattress stitch it all the way down yeah, so I need to make one more of those. And then what I need to do is take off the bottom again and knit on another bit. Ugh. Now, actually, I saved the bit that I cut off. I cut off a good six, seven, eight inches of the jumper, but I cut off too much, so it's too short. So I'm gonna have to go back in and do that. It just sucks. Because how do you, I need to look up how to do Kitchener stitch on like cables pain pain of it I don't want to think about it um I'm wondering if I just make it wide enough will it be fine <laughs> so we'll see but I did knit I did knit these long enough to add on so maybe he'll just have extra little flappy bits. I don't know anyway I can't I, so I'll knit this next and then I have to cut the binding to be honest it's the wrong color anyway so maybe it's just better for 
Um, yeah, so I'll cut that off and I'll continue knitting on another, probably this, this much extra and then another bit of, uh, and then like, so that again is what I need. And I was thinking about just doing extra ribbing, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look great. So I'll, I do have to extend the pattern down. I think that's my dinner ready. So that's basically, oh, I just wanted to show you one more thing, just a little bit more close up. I don't know if he saw this. Well, I think I think he did, but I have it here with me today. But this is my hand fasting ribbon, which I basically did a, um, like a tablet woven hand fasting ribbon. So if I put it near my face, you can see. Cute. That's a whole that's a whole year of skincare right there for wedding. <laughs> um yeah. So that's quite cute. Oh and also I'll show you the tie, which I showed you last week, but the pictures weren't great on it. Um I don't even know if I did get a picture and I do need to flatten it out again because look it's curling like mad. James didn't see the need to iron it on the day of his wedding either. So it was curling all day. Every single picture of James with any one of my family, um my aunts basically, has them fixing his tie. <laughs> So it is a uh, mitre, mitre square really. You start here with your uh, 10, 20 stitches or, what, or 20 stitches, I think, 21 stitches. And then you decrease here and you, incre or you increase here on the edge. I think it's just a yarn over on the edge. And I did a little loopy, loopy boop here to put, put the end of the tie in. This actually wasn't long enough, um, but sure, look, it's fine. And I probably, <clears throat> I decreased it again and I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have left it like a bat. Mm, I don't know. Anyway, it's a really pretty colour. Don't know. I think this might have been given to me by B at the John Arbin Open Day or maybe on the tour that we organised on Christmas. I think that's the yarn you gave me. It's just such beautiful colours and it was the colours of my wedding as well. So... Thank you. And it is in the centre as well, centre of this. And the grey in this uh, is the grey of the jumper for James. And the mint just kind of looks nice. <laughs> and the pink is the my pussy cat um, hat that I knit down in when I was in New Zealand or when I was in Tasmania. And it's such a beautiful colour. I love this, the way it sets off with that. And then when you curl it up into, I love the way all you can see is the pink that's so satisfying the white then is actually my wedding dress uh it's the yarn from my wedding dress so that's really cute i'm gonna leave you now with a little slideshow of pictures that i got from my photographer which is so nice um all detailing the wedding dress so really short and sweet um thanks so much for watching i'm hopefully going to try and do a few more podcasts of things um you know, that, uh, that I'm doing. Um, but I'm going to leave it there today and hopefully I will get back to you next week. And I'm going to try and try and get back to weekly podcasts. Um, I'm probably not going to make as much, but I'm not going to put myself under too much pressure. It's just nice to get on and chat with you guys. So, um, thank you so much for visiting and I will see you next week.